uh, Jonglin Park, uh, who was in uh, uh, Sarah Teichman's group, if I'm not mistaken, um, and is now based in Korea. So please go ahead, Jonglin. Okay. So thank you for a nice introduction. Uh, as Shirley mentioned, uh, I did a postdoc in Sarah Teichman's group in Sarah Institute, and I just established my lab in KAIST, South Korea, just uh, in this September. And today I'll be talking about the work that I've done during my postdoc training uh, period, which is about uh, generating single cell atlas of human thymus and T cell development. So I, among this hematopoietic trajectory, I'll especially talk about T cells today. And the reason why, uh, so when I was starting the postdoc, the idea that I had is uh, using this proper single cell technique, can we actually make a comprehensive cellular map of human organ across its lifetime? And the reason why I choose thymus as an organ of interest is because it has a uh, very interesting function, structure, and dynamics. So I'll introduce briefly about that. So firstly, thymus of, uh, function of thymus is the uh, induction of T cell fate. So the hematopoietic uh, progenitors generated from uh, bone marrow or fetal liver, they migrate into thymus and they get a strong notch signal, which induced T cell fate. And this naive T cell, they migrate into the periphery and then uh, they uh, get ready for protect our body against uh, potential uh, pathogens. And at the same time, these T cells undergo uh, VDG recombination process to generate diverse T cell repertoire, uh, which provide diversity to cope with the various pathogens that we can encounter during, uh, during our lifetime. But at the same time, thymus express uh, a small subset of peripheral antigens, the self antigens, to train these T cells not to kill ourselves. So, or the T cells that are highly reactive to our body gets deleted in thymus. This is the core, uh, process called cell tolerance. And this T cell uh, biogenesis uh, is highly linked to the thymic structure. So if you look into the thymus, which is just located above our heart, it consists of multiple, multiple lobules and in, within lobules, it contains cortex and medulla structure. And T cell development start from the uh, cortex where they migrate and uh, they, their TCR gets recombined, and then there are uh, only the T cells that has the active TCR gets selected. And then these T cells uh, then enter to the medulla where all the cell antigens get expressed so that any T cells that are highly reactive to cell gets selected against in this structure. And there are multiple cell types, including epithelial cells and other immune cells, antigen presenting cells, which constitute this environment. And another aspect, interesting aspect of thymus is its dynamics. So uh, thymus is actually the highly active uh, when we were, uh, we were before birth and right after birth. But just after birth, it uh, rapidly starts to degenerate. And after puberty, this degeneration gets even faster. And by the age of myself, which is around 30, uh, 30 or 35, uh, I've it's strikingly, I've already lost most of the functional part of thymus. So it's a very unique organ to look into the uh, human aging process. So the first part is the overview of thymus cell atlas. So uh, we try to collect the thymus from all different uh, time point of human development, starting with the fetal cells and also pediatric tissue and also try to get adult, aged adult cells. And then we isolate single cells from here and sort it into the T cells and non T cells because Thymus is basically back of uh, T cells. So if we just do single cell, we uh, barely get any known T cells. And also we did a TCR sequencing, uh, which is coupled to gene expression so that we can actually look at the VDJ recombination process as, uh, at real time. And this is actually the, our sampling point. So we have sampled from seventh week and seventh, uh, to, to the 17 week of the fetus, uh, which encompasses all the development and maturation of thymus. And then we have a pediatric sampling, and then we have a samples from more than 20 year old donor, which represents the aged thymus. And in this data set, we have, of course, developing and mature T cells. So there are double negative, double positive, and single positive T cells, and all the other unconventional T cell lineages. And then we could also see other immune cells, uh, including antigen presenting cells and, uh, or, uh, and B cells. And there are diverse diversity of thymic epithelial cells to, that we detected across uh, thymic lifetime. And then there's also mesenchymal cells, which has basically constitute the structure of the thymus. So what we initially did was to take these uh, cells that constitute the structure base of thymus 
And then we find the unique markers that could identify this cell type. And then taking these unique markers, we designed the RNA fish probe to, uh, to locate this uh, single cell based cell type into actual tissue. So this is the data. And in summary, we could reconstitute, uh, reconstitute the uh, organ structure basically by mapping this single cell uh, profile into the actual structure. And there came uh, interesting new discoveries. Uh, first is that we could identify the two layer of fibrous that is, uh, that is encapsulating the thymic epithelial bit. So there's a, a one layer of fibrous that, that is more related with the ECM development and vasculature regulation. And then there's another thin layer of uh, inner layer of fibrous that is responsible for the epithelial uh, cell differentiation and growth. And also we identified some new uh, thymic epithelial cells, which is uh, uh, one example is neuroendocrine-like cells uh, that express a lot of neuroendocrine-like markers and also show the signature of epithelial cells and that are found in medulla of thymus. Uh, and another aspect of our data, as I've showed, mentioned already, is the dynamic uh, throughout lifetime. So this is the same unit plot that I showed uh, with the different cell type compositions. And now this is colored based on the developmental stages where these cells are taken from. And interestingly, what you can see here is that, for example, these orange cells, which rep represent cells from uh, earlier than nine PCW feature stage, you can see that uh, the tiny epithelial cells are really developing here and all the T cells are uh, stuck at the early double negative stage. And interestingly, I think most of us will belong to this stage. So in H thymus, uh, you can see the unique feature of epithelial cells or fibroblast, and then also the immune cells shows interesting uh, signature. So if you look into more deeper into this, and by firstly focusing on tiny epithelial cells, we could identify uh, at least eight different types of the uh, thymic epithelial cells in human, which comprise uh, one of the cortical type and uh, many of the medullary type. And what you can see here is, uh, uh, what we, I'd like to highlight here is this red color cells, which are MTEC2, which express tissue restricted antigens. So they are responsible for the uh, selection of, against uh, cell reactive T cells. And, uh, this picture changes as we look into the uh, lifetime dynamics. In early fetus, you can see that only the cortical T cell uh, tech types are enriched here, whereas in prime time thymus for the late stage fetus or early pediatric stage, you can see that all the balanced population of uh, identified uh, thymic epithelial cell type that, uh, that we found. But at the age thymus for more than uh, 15 years old, you can see that this functional MTEC2 gets really decreased and then either the text become terminally differentiated or stuck at the intermediate stage, uh, expressing a lot of uh, inflammatory signature like IS-33 or CXCLA expression. So basically this shows a, a very global overview about what happens to thymic epithelium and why the thymus uh, like degenerates throughout lifetime. And this dynamics uh, can be found in also in, uh, all the other cell types, for example, uh, we can see the innate lymphocytes are enriched in early stage, and then the T cell development kicks in. And in later stage, we can see the accumulation of memory T and B cells. And then we could see that the, uh, the composition of antigen presenting cells actually changed throughout lifetime. And also, I have already shown you change in time epithelial cells and fibrous dynamics. So this was about the overview of the time cell atlas. And now let's focus on human T cell development, uh, which can be only observed uh, by looking into human thymus. So this is the reconstituted uh, tra trajectory for human T cell development from our data set. You can see that uh, there's early T cell progenitor, which uh, should be coming from early lymphoid progenitor that, is, that was mentioned before. And then you can see all the expected stage of double negative and double positive uh, recombination. And after a single positive comment, they, we can see the CD4 and CD8 bifurcation. And we could also identify the gamma delta T cell uh, commitment trajectory coming from uh, double negative and double positive junctions. And what we could do, uh, do with this data is now we can identify all the transcription factors that are really important for each of these transitions. So this uh, right diagram shows uh, the transcription factor network that has been reconstituted by looking into this data. And this really provides a transcription factor recipe for all the human T cells. And this has a tremendous implication about uh, if you think about uh, generating human T cells in vitro, it's now really uh, a hot issue for immune therapy. So basically we have all the recipe to generate them. 
And also another interesting aspect of our data is that we could identify many different non-conventional T-cells in thymus. So not only for T-rex, which, uh, which are CD4 T-cells uh, that are generated by a little bit high cell reactivity, we could also identify other unconventional T-cells, uh, at least four different types uh, that, has, that are being generated from thymus. And today I want to highlight this population, which we named uh, GNG4 T-cells. This is a subset of T cells that express uh, CD8 alpha alpha homodimer. And this was interesting because when we look into other data set, uh, we could find that this cell type is really unique to, to thymus. So in human, this cell type was only found in uh, thymus. And then it also shows interesting localization, which is localize, localizing between a uh, perimedullary region, the junction between cortex and medulla. So what is the function of this T cell in thymus? And for the functional inference, I always like to look into the cell-cell interaction diagram because uh, all the cell function is defined as a role in relation to other cells. And especially I like to focus on chemokines because they really tell you about which cells are interacting uh, with each other. So this is the chemokine expression map uh, for the chemokine ligand and receptors and uh, cell type pairs uh, for our data set. And this can be uh, transferred to this diagram where uh, Using the CTEC and MTEC localization, we already uh, for which we already know that they localize to cortex and medulla, we can overlay other immune uh, T cells and immune cells based on chemical interaction map. And what we could see is uh, these GNG4 T cells are nicely predicted to be located between uh, cortex and med medullary junction. And then it also shows that uh, they might be interacting with the CRISPR uh, DC1 type by recruiting, uh, uh, showing the recruiting uh, chemokine for that. So then we decide to validate this by going back to the uh, imaging approach. So we designed a specific probe for each population. And then we could really identify that these change 4 T cells and uh, XCR1 high DC ones are co-localizing here in a uh, perimeter, peri perimeter region, where you can see as a mixture of red and green dots here. And all the other uh, cell population, T cell population or dendritic cell population, uh, all shows the coherent, uh, uh, coherent, coherent uh, localization pattern in relation to our in silico model. So this shows that uh, even just looking from the single cell data, we could uh, kind of get a quite correct model about how these immune cells interact to each other. And lastly, I'll uh, talk about the mouse and human comparison because uh, since thymus has been discovered in 1960s, most of the time, a study about thymus has been done on mouse models. And uh, when we think about human autoimmune disease, uh, we, we don't really have a good reference about how the findings from mouse studies can be transferred uh, to the human clinics. So uh, to compare human and mouse, we also uh, decided to generate the comprehensive mouse thymus across lifetime. So we took uh, all the published public uh, data and also we generated our data ourselves for the missing timelines. And then we annotate these mouse cells using the same criteria that we used to annotate human cells so that they can be uh, matched to each other. And if you just focus on the mature T cells, uh, then uh, I'm, I'm showing you here that a mature T cell outcome from the mouse thymus and uh, on X axis, I'm showing you the mature T cell from the human thymus. And the heat map shows that uh, according to the machine learning prediction score, uh, how well they are matching to each other. So the cell types that is uh, uh, marked with asterisk shows that there are indeed cell types that are corresponding to each other pretty well. For example, CD4 T cells and CD8 T cells or T-Rex, we can easily find their counterpart parts. But at the same time, one of the non-conventional T cells that we have identified in human uh, we couldn't find the good counterparts in uh, mouse, which shows that some unconventional T cell can be human specific. And another interesting aspect is that the GNH4 T cells that I mentioned today is actually has a good mouse counterpart, which is uh, the cell type called IELPA. This is the precursor, tiny precursor of the uh, intraepithelial lymphoid uh, cells uh, that populates gut in nature, uh, and that has been well characterized in mouse. So uh, we questioned are they identical cell types? So uh, to address this question, uh, we uh, di directly compared their marcogen expression for these human uh, GNH4 T cells and murine counterpart, IRPA cells. And then we could clearly see why they are predicted to be the counterparts, because they share this conserved uh, gene expression program, which uh, 
uh, whose expression gets obliterated when they get the strong TCR signal. So they share the same developmental cue, which is the strong TCR signal. But at the same time, we could identify a set of human specific genes, uh, including GNG4 itself and XCR1, which is required for the DC1 recruitment. Uh, but they are not actually highly expressed in mouse counterpart. And it, actually, in mouse uh, cell type, they, are, they also have a very unique gene expression program, uh, including Cloud in 10 and Z2, which kind of uh, it indicates they might have a role with the, in relation to the epithelial cells. So the take home message here is that although we could identify the counterparts between human and mouse, actually they are in spectrum. So some cells do match to each other pretty well, but the some cells uh, share only some programs, but they're distinct in, uh, in, uh, in terms of the functionality. So this is the reason why it's, uh, it's important to uh, build a comprehensive atlas of modern organism and human and design a, uh, design a metric to compare them uh, in a gradient manner. Uh, so if I have a little bit of time, then I also talk a little bit about BDJ uh, repertoire formation. Uh, just because, one minute, please, John Lin. Uh, just one minute, yeah. yeah. Then I'll just skip this part, but uh, just uh, to, to uh, in brief, we, we could also see the BDJ recombination as single cell resolution. And using this BDJ recombination uh, signature, what we could do was to compare uh, the commitment time between different T cell types. And what we could identify, identify is that CD8 T cells uh, actually spend longer time in double positive states uh, looking into this BDJ recombination signature. So this is the end of my talk. And to summarize, uh, we have generated the uh, human, uh, the cell atlas of human or organ across development and aging, which allow us to look into uh, also it's structural factors and uh, T cell development. And also we, uh, we generate the human and mouse comparison uh, data set to, uh, to map the immune cells between human and mouse. So this is the end of my talk. And I really thank my uh, postdoc supervisor, Sara, for uh, nice support for this project. And also highlight our uh, main collaborators, uh, Mosley Panipa and Tom Taiwan for, uh, for the very keen uh, collaborative uh, work and also for funding agencies and all the donors uh, who, who donated their precious, precious uh, materials. So that's the end of my talk and I'll take questions. Uh, that was wonderful, stunning work, jong -un. Um, Really impressive. Uh, yeah, I remember hearing Sarah talk about this work at a previous meeting and was just blown away. So congratulations on that. Um, so I have a couple of questions while we're waiting for other people uh, to ask. Um, so the first is uh, related to your age, age-related changes uh, in the composition of um, epithelial, uh, thymic epithelial cells. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, chemical or physical castration can regenerate the thymus. Uh, at least in mice <laughs> and probably humans as well, but that's not an experiment we want to do. Did you see if in mice that balance was shifted with age and if that could be reversed with castration or there's some other means by which you get thymic regeneration um, after chemical uh, or physical castration? Uh, uh, but uh, Shirley, what do you mean by the balance? Um, so my understanding was in in your you have these C techs and the M, M tech cortical uh, and medullary yes. and that balance changed with age. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. 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 Uh, and that's in and human patients. And I'm wondering in the mouse, which is the only ethical place to do this experiment, mm -hmm. can you see the similar pattern in mouse and in aged mice? If you were to castrate them, could the balance go back to the like what explains thymus regeneration in castrated male mice? That's my question. Yes. Uh, yes, I think that's really interesting question that actually we are sort of uh, pursuing uh, uh, following this project at in SARS group. Uh, and uh, what I can tell you is that this CTEC and MTEC balance uh, does seem to change uh, in similar way in mouse, but not at the similar level I, uh, from the, for the, for the age range that I looked into, it seems like human thymic degeneration is more, like, more, uh, like it's it's much stronger, and right. it also yeah express a lot of inflammatory markers which we couldn't find in, uh, in mouse data set. But uh, uh, 
but at the same time, we didn't we didn't do the actually the same resolution of mouse time epithelial cell profiling. Mm. So I think that requires another study focusing only on epithelial cell types uh, with the mouse tissue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how far I can tell you, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, I might just ask you to stop sharing your screen so we can see your face a bit bigger. And we have another question from the audience um, from, I uh, hope I pronounced this correctly, Chiming Zhang. Uh, Hi, Dr. Park, thanks for your talk. I want to ask a question on MTEC populations. What's the phenotype differences on the three MTEC populations? I noticed that MTEC1 highly express IL-33 and CXCL8, do they, recruit other cell populations thanks uh yes that's uh that's also an interesting point and uh mtech one actually this uh i assert uh i assert three and six or eight is not a, a not a conserved phenotype of mtech one throughout lifetime it only shows up after uh when we see that uh when we get the de thymic degeneration so in general mtech one seems to be a sort of intermediate population that is uh going from the Going from the pro differentiating from potentially progenitor to uh, more functional MTEC2. So they show sort of intermediate phenotype there, uh, and they don't express tissue restricted antigens. And what MTEC, what MTEC1 does in degenerate thymus is something that we don't know actually. I think we need uh, a spatial study in relation, uh, in addition to this, to really identify where these MTEC1 type cells are located in degenerative thymus and uh, what kind of immune cells are nearby, located nearby to them. Great, thank you. Um, I'll now open it up to um, anyone who has a question for any of the speakers today. So please uh, fire across your questions. Um, Professor Tao, if there's uh, any question or comment you would like to make, feel free to yeah, uh, jump in. Yeah, I still have a question on the question for, for Dr. Park, is that okay? Yes, of course, please go ahead. Yeah, so and, uh, quite an interesting talk. So I'm just wondering, you may notice at the same time, the, there is a T uh, cell development in human embryo reported by uh, uh, Hong Bo Hu, also Bing Liu together. So my question would be, did you see the major What's the key difference or commonality between two stories in terms of the human T cell development? Yes. Uh, actually, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think these two stories was really complementary to each other uh, because uh, Hongbo's, uh, Hongbo's uh, sampling time period is uh, really on the human embryo, which was actually the sample that we couldn't get in our program. So. Uh, they really show how the really early thymic organogenesis happens. And then what we are showing here is what happens afterwards, how, how, the, how the thymus evolves as an organ at the, late, uh, at the later feature time point, and then also uh, throughout uh, hum, uh, post, post uh, after birth human uh, lifetime. So one of my interests is to combine these two data set and see how seemingly, uh, seamlessly they could uh, be linked and what kind of new insight can be coming from uh, those kind of uh, alignment. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So another question, maybe, you know, a little bit, bit uh, beyond the scope you just presented is the, I'm always curious for the T cell in adulthood. Uh, do you think it's all from the HSC or is still a broad region in our body? So I'm just uh, curious or wondering. Or if you have some study already ongoing, that would be great. Uh, you, you mean? My question? Yeah. T cells so in, in T -cell. adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, the region is, uh, as you know, the macrophage has two resources, right? Why is yes. it uh, if, uh, even from the yolk side, from embryonic region, another HSC? What about the T cell? Right? Yeah. From what I remember in mouse system, there was a study indicating the T cell may also have some embryonic region rather than HSC in the bone marrow, right? Nice. So you're asking about the like, like counterparts, part, counterpart in embryonic macrophages, whether they are embryonic yeah, uh, T cell. Yeah, in still T cell, is any similar to different route, you know, in the uh, T cell no. generation, uh, you know? That's, yes, that's a really interesting know. question. Uh, what I think is because 
because dynamic development uh, is is actually quite later than uh, the onset of micro macrophage differentiation. I think uh, this will not be into this dual dual like immune cell hematopoiesis story. So I think uh, from my perspective, T cell generation happens a little bit. Uh, it's like the uh, cells that has that is start to generate it uh, latest among immune cells. So I think they will be quite uniform. That's that's my assumption. But there was there was a lot of publication about actually even from thymus the T cell coming from there is diff differs throughout uh, the timeline. So the the earliest T cells are differ uh, from the later T cells. And I think this kind of concept about uh, the T cell coming from first is more like innate like cells. Like for example, in, in case of mouse, they are gamma T cells, and the adaptive Im immunity comes uh, step in a little bit later. I think this kind of gives nice knowledge to the dual hematopoiesis for macrophages. Good, thank you. Um, on that note, I actually have a question as well. So my um, PhD supervisor, Ken Shortman, uh, and, and Li Wu, um, who, who's now back in China actually, um, they discovered this CD4 low thymic progenitor that gave rise to T cells and dendritic cells uh, mm -hmm. intrathymically. And yeah. there's been a lot of controversy over the years about uh, whether that's antigen pickup, whether it's a genuine common progenitor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Hans Reimer Rodewald has used reporters to show that one uh, has a lymphoid history, the other doesn't. I'm wondering if you could use mitochondrial DNA natural barcodes to mm -hmm. test lineage relationships between your cell types in the, in the thymic fractions and shed some light. Yes, that's... That's actually the question we also had whether because we are we do see a lot of like dendritic cells uh, even from early 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 thymus so we thought uh, how many of them are really actually being generated from thymus but uh, from our data we tried with uh, this using to look at the mitochondrial DNA but the signal was not that uh, mm. strong so that it was really difficult to draw a clear conclusion but uh, when we look in but there was, I think, uh, there's a paper that our collaborative team, you, do you know Tam Tegon? His group has published this story about early thymic progenitors uh, in, uh, in immunity, which was focusing on really sorting out these early thymic progenitors and looking into their potentials. And we could see that there are very minor, but we do see the sort of continuous lineage going to all the other, like all the other immune lineages. So what we thought was, in thymus, uh, if there there should be a spot of high notch signal, but there should be some mosaicism. So if if this thymus progenitor is coming into thymus, if they fall into a little bit less uh, like T cell inducing niche, less potential T cell inducing, inducing niche, then they may uh, form uh, like different lineage there, like B cell or dendritic cells in very rare uh, occasions. Yeah. But yeah, this, this is really interesting topic, I think. Yeah, I mean, especially there's some work coming out that notch signals, at least in vitro, really boosts the CDC1 numbers in cultures. So um, that's that's another kind of interesting I see. twist there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you've got a couple of questions that I'm going to give you some quick fire uh, uh, questions for. Uh, hi, Jong Un, just following up from Chiming's question Does the emergence of the IL 33 positive coincide with some T reg expansion? Uh, yes. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's a causal, uh, we, we see any causality there, but t -ray expansion, we, we do observe t -ray expansion in thymus and uh, it's it's very, very prominent. And uh, when we look into TCR crunch, uh, chronality, and, but I'm not sure whether I, we, if I remember cor correctly, the proportion of t -ray in thymus, I'm not sure whether it increased with the age. I think it's, it didn't show a kind of like a regulation, if I remember correctly. Okay, thank you. The next one is, is 10x single cell RNA-seq deep enough to look at TRA expression of mTech? Uh, it's, my conclusion is it's, uh, it's not deep enough, but it's, but it's deep so that we can actually see the TRA expression there. So if you look at our data, you could see like the, the canonical TRA gene like uh, insulin, we could see the, their expression. But most of the really important question in TRA is, uh, 
which, what kind of co-expression pattern they show. And I don't, I'm not sure whether 10x genomics uh, platform is like deep enough to draw address that question. I think that's more with the cell seed or plate based uh, uh, with the higher throughput type of the technology. Mm, that's interesting. Um, from uh, Archita Mishra, thanks for the wonderful talk. Regarding thymic TCR data, did you find any antigen experienced T cells in fetal thymus? Also, did you see any mate cell signatures in your data? Okay, so mice cells doesn't form a cluster in our data, whereas in blood they do. But there are multiple evidence that mice cells can come from thymus. So I think it's uh, in our data, they're just not, not form enough, uh, like population uh, proportion to come up as a separate cluster. So are the like my, my associate TCRs gets like nicely mixed with, uh, with other T cells. So we couldn't find the distinct mite uh, signatures. And the other thing, the other, uh, what was the notification about uh, TCR? Do you find antigen experienced T cells in fetal uh, thymus? I, I don't think so. Uh, so only chronal expansion that I could see is the T-Rex in thymus. So, uh, but I'm not sure whether they are, they are, coming, they are the result for, of any antigen uh, experience, but, after pediatric stage, so as we age, age as I show you, there's an increase of uh, mature T cell and B cell population in thymus. But uh, what I believe is they are not in the same region as uh, naive T cell. So uh, as I told you already, there must be thymine mosaicism because actually if you look at degenerated thymus, then they are really heterogeneous. They don't, they don't have this canonical cortex and med medullary shape. So I think in H thymus, there is a spot that has uh, really functional thy thymus left, but then there's other spot there. There might be an interesting immune response going on there so that they accumulate antigen, uh, uh, antigen responding T cells. So for those T cells, the memory T cells in H thymus, we do see the coronary expansion there. Great. Um, look, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, and just to thank, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, Professor Chen. Um, but it, it was a, a real two to force of the work you guys are doing there at the, for the ABC and other work there. Um, really looking forward to seeing the publications come out and the ones that you've already published. Um, Jong-un, your, your data was really inspiring and generate a lot of buzz. So thank you, uh, all the speakers, thank me, and uh, thank you for attending. Um, have a pleasant day and enjoy the rest of your sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.